Hi guys, welcome to my first ever music theory video. I've been wanting to make this video for a really long time as a resource that you can take um, during your own time. But I haven't done it. It's been like 10 years since I've been wanting to do it. And today's the day. I'm going to finally put it all together. Um, and I'm super excited about it. Now, a couple things. Music theory is not as difficult as you think. It gets really complex, but... The basic fundamentals of music theory are really simple. This video is going to be about 30 minutes long. And in that 30 minutes, you will understand the basic fundamentals of music theory, where you can go to any jam session, you go to any uh, worship team, you go play, and you'll get it. It's really simple. There are only a few requirements that I have for you to take this class. Uh, one is you have to be able to count from one to eight. You have to know the alphabet from A to G in order, you have to know a few Roman numerals, and you have to be able to memorize a few patterns. If you have all that stuff together, this is gonna this is gonna be a breeze. Like I said, 30 minutes. You're gonna learn this whole thing in like 30 minutes. Really cool. And if you don't get it, watch it again. It all makes sense to you. So let's dig in. So music theory is based off of something called the major scale. If I were to draw a keyboard like this, I know we've all seen these before, all right? Hopefully, hopefully. And there's a keyboard for you. If you were to play all the white keys, that would be the major scale. And if you started on C, it'd be C, D, E, F, G, A. B, C. So it'd be do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, right? That is the major scale. Music theory is based off of this scale. Now you notice on a keyboard, there's also these black keys. C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and C sharp again, right? You have the black keys. Now the black keys are there if you play in different keys. But the major, if you start in the key of C, is just the white keys. And this is a major scale, major scale, right? I'm gonna teach you another scale. It's called the chromatic scale. The chromatic scale is every note having the same distance in between them. So if this here, let's call it chromatic, chromatic scale. The chromatic scale, if I were to build a keyboard based off the chromatic scale, it would look like this. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, oh geez, I'm running out of room here. Let's try to do some of these. All right, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. Look at that. If I were to build a keyboard, <clears throat> using the chromatic scale, it would be enormous. Look at the distance between this C to this C. It's so far. My hands, not big enough to be able to play a keyboard if it was all laid out in a chromatic scale. Now, for you guitar players, your frets, yes, they are on the chromatic scale. It's a half step for every single fret that you play. But on a piano, if you were to do that, it would have been really difficult. Unless you like stack five of them together, then you might as well learn how to play the guitar. The chromatic scale, the distance between each note in the chromatic scale is a half step. So C sharp, so C to C sharp would be a half step. C sharp to D would be a half step. D to D sharp, half step, half step. E to F, half step. F to F sharp, half step. These are all half steps. That's the pattern. Half step, half step, half step. The entire scale is half steps. 
The major scale, however, is slightly different. If you were to play all the white keys and you start on the key of C, the major scale looks like this. The distance between C and D, you notice that there's a C sharp in there. On the chromatic, that would be two halves. If you put two halves together, you get one whole. So between this, between C and D, the distance between the C and D would be a whole step. Okay. The distance between D and E, because you have a D sharp up here, this will also be a whole step. E to F would be a half step. F to G would be a whole step. G to A would be a whole step. A to B would be a whole step. And B to C would be a half step. If you were to follow this pattern of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, that is the major scale. If you follow that pattern and you start on a different note, say you start in D, you still have to go whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half to get the major scale in the key of D. The distance between the notes are always going to be in this pattern. For anywhere you start on the keyboard. You start there, you go the whole note, whole note, half note, you are playing the major scale in that key. Make sense? Cool. So the things I want you to memorize, really simple, there are three things that I want you to memorize. One is a few Roman numerals. Ready? Here we go. A big one, little two, little three, big four, big five, little six, and a seven with a little circle on it. You got it? All right. I want you to memorize this. This is the basic fundamentals right there of the major scale. So in order for you to understand this, let me draw um, a few triads for you. A triad is essentially three notes that, that make up a chord. So <clears throat> if I were to play the one, this one here, in the key of C, it would be a one, three, five, which means it would be a C, E, and a G, right? So if I were to go into scale, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we did, let's change colors here, one, three, and five, you will get the one. Now notice the difference between the one and the three. Between the C and the E, you have three notes in between there, right? If you have three notes in between your one and three, that is a major chord. Now, if you want to play a C minor chord, it would be C, E flat, G. The E would have to go down a half step in order for you to get a minor chord. C, E, G is a major. C, E flat, G is the C minor. But in the key of C, you don't play C minor, right? You stay with the white keys. So it would be C, E, G. Now, the second chord will start with D. Let's change color here. Be D, F, A. So let's write that. D, F, A. Now, notice that that is a small Roman numeral 2. And the reason why it's a small Roman numeral 2 is look at the distance between this D and this F. Actually, let's change color. Let's do this. The distance between this D and this F. There are only two notes in between that D and F. There's two, D and F. So this is what they call a minor. When you go one, three, five, three, one, that's a major. When you go one, three, that's a minor. When you take the three and you bring it down half a step, you have yourself a minor. So then let's fill out the rest of this. So the third would be E, right? G, 
B. Also a minor because the distance between E and G, there's only two notes in between there, so it makes it a minor. So let's do the four. F, A, C. We're back to major again. You starting to get this? Like it's starting to make sense? Here you go. G, B, D. Back to major again. A, C, E. Back to minor. And B, D, F. Now that is an interesting one. B, D, F is interesting in the fact that the distance between B and D so let's extend this out a little bit farther here. Here's your C. Boom, 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 boom. We'll find that. Do, 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 do. And back to C again. Right. Let's see. D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now, B, if I were to go B, D, F, there are two notes in between this B and D, which make it a minor, but then between this D to this F, there's only two notes. Usually there'll be a three if it was just a straight minor, but a diminished chord is when the third is flat and the fifth is flat. So if you want to play a B major, it would be B, D sharp, F sharp. So in the key of B, the one would be a B, D sharp, F sharp, B major. But in the key of C, because you can't play the black notes in the key of C, you're at B, D, F. And so D is down half a step, F is down half a step, B, D, F, they call that a diminished. And that is what this looks like. So boom, there are all the notes in the key of C. Okay? Awesome. Now, the second thing I want you to remember, to memorize. Here we go. Oh, went too far. Is your alphabet in this order? You start with F. F, C, G, D, A, E, B. You're going to have to memorize that. F, C, G, D, A, E, B. Why? I call this the order of sharps. Order of sharps. What does that mean? Have you ever seen sheet music? And it looks like this. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Have you ever seen music like this? <clears throat> in piano and violin, you'll see stuff like this. If you see no sharps in there, you're in the key of C. Key of C has no sharps. But have you ever seen the, the pound sign or what the hashtag or the tic-tac-toe uh, sign on music? It's, it, took, it took a while for me to understand this, but they were always in the same order. It's really weird, right? It was always like this, F, C, G, well actually, actually before I do that, let me show you the notes of this thing. <laughs> now don't be angry at me, everyone learned this a little bit different. The notes on the treble clef are like this, every good boy does fine. I've seen every good boy deserves fudge. Every good boy, like there's there's a lot. But this is how I learned it. Everyone learned it a little bit different. But the notes on the treble clef are E, G, B, D, F on the lines. And the spaces are face. F, A, C, E. Okay. Those are the notes that are on this treble clef. So, Back to the order of sharps. The sharps are always in this order. 
F C G D A E B. Always in that order. F C G D A E B. So if you have one sharp, you can't have just a random sharp. The sharp has to be an F sharp. If you have two sharps, you can't have just random sharps. It has to be an F sharp and has to be a C sharp. And if you have three sharps, it has to be an F sharp, a C sharp, and a G sharp, right? That's the order of sharps. And they're always like this. They always go left or right in this order. So why is that important? i tell you why it's important. Because now, music has two different languages. One side I call theory language, which is the Roman numerals. And the second side I call common language, which is all the alphabet. Um, your alphabet A through G and the way you say, like, I want a C sharp or a C chord or a D chord or a G chord. All of those is going to be in common language. When you say I want a 1 or a 4 or a 5, that's going to be theory language. So if you had, let's see, keys. So we're going to talk in common language for a second. If you're in the key of C, you have zero sharps. In the key of C, there are no sharps, right? Now, if you're in the key of G, you have one sharp, right? And if you have one sharp, that sharp has to be F sharp, right? Because it's the order of sharps. So if you have one sharp, it the sharp is an F sharp, and you're in the key of G, okay? Let's go D. D has two sharps in it, and those sharps are F sharp, C sharp. E, or A, has three sharps in it, okay? E, four sharps in it, right? In there, B has five sharps. F sharp has six sharps and C sharp has seven sharps. Okay? So if you're in the key of C, you will have no sharps. If you're in the key of G, you have one sharp, and that one sharp is going to be F sharp. Remember, Memorize the order of sharps. F, C, G, D, A, E, B. If you have one sharp, you're in the key of G, and that one sharp has to be an F sharp. If you have two sharps, you're in the key of D, and those sharps have to be F sharp, C sharp, right? Just memorize this pattern here, and then you'll, you'll get it. Order of sharps. Now there's this other thing that they call, which is flats, right? The order of flats, ironically enough, is the inverse of the order of sharps. So order of flats, it's going to be B, E, A, D, G, C, F order of flats, right? So this here, when I said you have to memorize three patterns, this is what you have to memorize. You have to memorize your Roman numerals so you get the major scale. You have to know the order of sharps and the order of flats. Now the order of flats is a little bit different. So order of flats looks like this. Two, three, four, five. And let's do this in bass clef or F clef, whatever you want to call it. 
And like I said, this is different for everyone. I learned it like this. Good boys do fine always. Or good boys deserve fudge always. Or everyone will learn it different. Okay. And the spaces are ace, C, E, G. Okay. Ace, G. Now the order of flats are always in this order. B, E, A, D, G, C, F. Always in that order. B, E, A, D, G, C, F. Right? The same thing as sharps. If there's one flat, it's going to be B flat. If there are two flats, it's going to be a B flat and an E flat. If there are three flats, it's going to be B flat, E flat, A flat. So let's bring that over here. So we'll call this sharp keys, call these flat keys, just because of a lack of a better term. Now, if you're in the key of C, you have zero flats. Okay, key of C, you have zero flats. Now, if you're in the key of F, notice this pattern. You have one flat. Well, I can get that. You got one flat in the key of F. Okay. If you're in the key of B flat, you have two flats. We're following this pattern again. E flat. Three flats. Okay. A flat. Equals four flats. D flat. Five flats. G flat. You have six flats. And C flat equals seven flats these right here are all your keys so if you're in the key of C you have zero flats you have zero sharps if you're in the key of G you have one sharp if you're in the key of F you have one flat if you're in the key of A you have three sharps if you're in the key of A flat you have four flats right looks like this but the pattern is always based on this. This F, C, G, D, A, E, B, and B, E, A, D, G, C, F. It's always in that order. Super simple. So let me show you this table, and then we'll call it. And you'll have the basic understanding of music theory. So let's create a table here. We'll go the Roman numerals first. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven. A little circle on it. Okay? Look at that. We'll put it like this. All right. Now, this is where you have to know your alphabet. So what key do you want to play in? Let's pick a key. We'll pick the key of C. So start here, add your alphabet. C, D, E, F, G, and then A, B. Yeah, I sing. I sing when I do alphabets. I, it's, it's deeply embedded in my brain. Every time I write it, the song comes out. Um, so here are your notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Know your alphabet. Start on whatever note you want to start on, whatever key you want to be in. Fill in the table. Now, I told you the big Roman numerals or the large Roman numerals are major chords. And so the little Roman numerals are minor chords. So let's fill in our minors. So two would be a minor. Three would be a minor. Six would be a minor. And then seven is what we call diminished. That's when the third is flat and the fifth is flat. 
And because C has no sharps and no flats, there you go. Those are all the chords in the key of C. All the major chords in the key of C, right there, boom. C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished. If you start on one, three, five in C and just go up all the white keys, you're gonna hear this. Super simple, right? Look at that, all the chords. Now chords get a lot more complex. This is just regular triads, first invert, like no inversions, just the, just the root chord looks like this. Now let's pick a different key. Say you want to play in a key of A. Let's try A. A, B, C, D, D, F, G, boom. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now you put in your minors. Your minors are two, three, six, diminished, right? But the key of A, also has three sharps okay and what are those sharps those sharps have to follow the order of sharps here have to follow that so those sharps are going to be f sharp c sharp g f c g and there you go those are all the chords in the key of a a, B minor, C sharp minor, D, E, F sharp minor, G sharp diminished. Let's do one more, just for good measure. Let's start with E. So let's do E. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, right? Let's add our minor chords. Two minor, three minor, 6 minor, 7 diminished, okay? Key of E has 4 sharps right here. Boom, boom, boom. What are those sharps? Those sharps have to be F, C, G, D. And there you go. Those are all the chords in the key of E. And you could do this for any of these, right? You could add your flats, you could add your sharps, know your alphabet, do it in sequence, put in your minors, put in your sharps. You will have the, you could write out the entire map of all music, right? So if we're in a band session, I say, hey, let's do uh, one, four, five in the key of C. Uh, we're just gonna play through that. Now you know that one, four, five is going to be a C major chord, F major chord, and a G major chord in the key of C. If you say, let's do one, four, five in the key of E, you know that it's gonna be an E major chord, A major, B major. That's it, that's all it is. Super simple, right? Yeah. So that essentially is the basic fundamentals that you need to know. Now go out there and play, you know, try to write this down a couple times. I'll say, you know, do this worksheet, this part of it um, a few times, do it for yourself, write it all out, um, get the Roman numerals in there, put your sharps in there. If you do it enough times, guess what? You're just going to memorize it and then you could just play it. And you could just say, we're going to do one, one, three, five, or one, five, four, or one, six. Uh, you, and you know which chords are major, which ones are minor, um, and be able to play. Really simple. 30 minutes, right? If you didn't get it, watch it again. You can post questions. Uh, I will try to answer them as, as quickly and thoroughly as possible. Um, and if you see me around, you could ask, because this stuff is embedded in my brain, so it's always there. Um, well, hopefully this helps you out. And I hope you know, your music endeavors are going to be amazing. Really simple, really easy. All right. God bless. See you guys.